Hey guys, today I'll talk about one of the most sophisticated modules you will ever see in VCV. It's called Teletype. And the manual for this beast, I mean, look at this, look at this, look at this. I mean, crazy. These people are crazy. 200 pages, I mean, but hey, it's not as bad as it looks. It's actually, this module is a joy to work with. It's never tedious. It's very intuitive once you get the basics. It's so much fun and it's sophisticated. It's deep, it's wide. It's, it's just, just one of the most beautiful module. It actually looks ugly, but trust me, once you, once you start using it, you will fall in love. So in this video, we'll go step-by-step. Step. So first I will show you a quick demo uh, of how we interact with this module. So you will get the sense whether this is something that you're even interested in. Then I will talk about what is Teletype, where it's coming from. Uh, I will show you where to get it actually, because it's not even available in VCV Rack library. And then we will go step-by-step. Step. I will show you how to take those first steps. So it's going to be a long video if you want to stick around till the end, uh, but I hope it's worth it. it. This module definitely deserves a lot of attention. So, okay, let's go. Okay, so let's give it a try. I have a very simple patch here, nothing fancy. And I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to try to build a very simple sequence. Now, you probably recognize it. It's a classic tracker interface where numbers represent semitones. And I could use, you know, four tracks for different instruments, and this is probably what you expect, but let's try something else. Let's use a second track with a different length as a transposition track. Now, it's still Nothing crazy, right? Because there are sequencers that could do something similar. But the best part of, about Teletype is that this tracker is being driven by a simple script that I wrote. These three lines are driving this tracker, which is fantastic because I could now say, hey, I want to have some kind of probability that um, my second track, this transposition track, so let's try this one. Um, will be randomized. So let's have a look at this one. See, these numbers start changing and evolving. You know, and this is just one example. I could, for example, say that there will be, you know, skip every five steps on the main track. So you can see this tracker now stops. Um, you know, we could we could do this uh, on, on many in many other ways. We could also communicate with it directly. Slow down, speed up. Uh, maybe we want to add slew to track one, or maybe we want to completely mess with randomization of the metronome. So as you can see very quickly, we're moving away from standard sequencing or standard trackers uh, and to this realm of very sophisticated, programmatic, generative um, sequencing. Uh, so how is it possible that we have a module of that complexity in VCV with 200 pages? Well, it's not a VCV rack module uh, to begin with. This module comes from your rack world. This is a real module that evolved over many years. Um, and we have pretty much exact replica of that now in the VCV. Uh, and the original module has this USB port where you plug in keyboard and then you can program it. You have basically uh, eight inputs that trigger different scripts and you have uh, four trigger outputs, four CV outputs. Uh, input with, uh, you know, you can control it from outside. You have also uh, a knob. 
Uh, and it's a fun module, but it kind of it's a problematic thing for Eurorack users because you know one of the reasons people move into Eurorack is to stay away from computers and keyboards, right? So now you suddenly have to find space for for the keyboard. And what I'm excited about here is that we have in, in VCV Rack it actually makes more sense because we are already sitting at the computer and there is a keyboard already involved. So it almost feels like this module belongs more to VCV Rack world than to your Rack. Um, but anyway, this module, you know, costs like four or five hundred bucks. So, you know, it, you can get the version for VCV for, for free and experiment. And I think it's a, it's, it's just, just wonderful. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so let's roll up our sleeves and let's get started. I'm assuming you don't even have teletype in your VCV rack right now. So in order to get that, you, you will need to go to this website uh, on Git. Um, I'll link the description, I mean, I, I'll link it in the description, so don't worry. Um, you just have to find the, the latest beta. So right now it's this one. So you click here, you scroll all the way to the bottom, and here we go, you pick your version, you download that, you drag it into Rack2 folder, and if you're not sure what to do, they even you know help you here. So it's super, super simple. It will take you less than a minute. Um, and then you should have a teletype in mono, uh, it's called monome uh, package. So as you can see, there are a bunch of other modules. I won't even mention them uh, today. We are focusing only on teletype, which is plenty. So um, the first thing you want to do is click on this screen. It means that your keyboard has uh, focus or the, the teletype has, has focus of your keyboard. So everything you type right now will all, always go here. So you can try it. So let's say give me life advice. Um, so this tells us two things that uh, teletype is working correctly. And the second thing it <laughs> tells us that it's not the GPT. Uh, so it won't be as uh, it won't give you BS answers um, if it doesn't know what to do. So with teletype, you need to know commands. So you know, obviously, there's a huge documentation out there, you can always reference, but I will show you step by step you know, the, the most common, the most useful ones. So the first thing you want to try as a kind of a practice is um, activating those trigger uh, outputs. So they produce some kind of voltage on the output if you know what to do with them or what, what, what kind of command to, to enter. So you say TR, then number of outputs. So in this case, let's say we want uh, TR1, and then you say one as another argument. So now it's activated. And by the way, if you want, uh, we could, uh, let's get something that, yeah, something visible. So as you can see, if it's one, it will give us output of about eight volts or zero, right? So try it a few times to get your, like, you know, get getting used to this, uh, this way of thinking. Uh, and then you can try to light up those other uh, LED. So for example, it's a, just a good practice to, to see if you can control it. All right, so it's the two. So let's say we want one. And then we want two. And notice what I'm doing is that I'm not I don't have to retype everything. It works like Linux command, uh, you can just uh, press arrows up and down and the, the most recent commands will be repeated. Um, so let's say three, four, and then you can, you know, try to see if you can un, uh, undo them. There are faster ways of doing that, more sophisticated, but this is just for practice, right? So you know you can control the this little beast. Um, there are also other uh, fun commands like tr.tog will toggle, right? So you can just um, repeat the same command and toggle everything. And uh, for those of you who are interested in, in programming, there are four loops here in, uh, in Teletab. I'm kind of going ahead, but you know, of, of the beginner uh, tutorial here, but you can try something like this. Um, it's like a for loop with I, as you can see, all of them 
you can toggle at the same time. So, uh, but you know, this is like, maybe it's too, too, we're jumping ahead right now. So let's focus on the second row, CV, right? So you might think, okay, there's another command here called CV. So you say, let's actually connect it to some kind of voltage meter here. So let's say you're thinking, okay, I'm going to send CV, I'm going to send volt, voltage of five into CV1, and it's not going to work, um, right? And you're saying, okay, nine, it, it changes, but it doesn't do much. So let's add another zero and another zero and and climb up. So you can see the range here is is enormous. It's, it's 10,000. Uh, and the maximum range here would be 16,383, uh, uh, because this is a 14-bit number. So this is the maximum value you can have here. Uh, and I'm, I'm showing you this. Uh, this is not how you actually make music in, in Teletype, so don't freak out. It's, it's, it's very technical right now. But I just want to mention that everything internally in Teletype is a 14-bit number. So you, you will see that uh, very often, for example, this parameter, the maximum value is also 163A383. Um, this is how teletype works. Fortunately, there are easier ways. So for example, if, if you, you know, if you wanted to have some like around five volt, it would be, you would have to divide it, right? But it's, it's, it's cumbersome. Like we don't want to spend time with calculators. And these calculators are actually built in to the system. So for example, if you want to calculate voltage, you just say voltage five or voltage seven or voltage two, right? And, and this, this should already give us some kind of musical effect, right? Because these are octave transpositions. And one thing you might, it might throw you off is, let's say, let's say you want to have voltage of 1.5 it's it's not gonna do it. Everything in teletype is just a 14-bit um, number. There are no floats, no fractionals, nothing else. So, it, for example, if you want to do voltage, it, there's another way of doing that, which is just double V, and then you can do. See that now it's 1.5. Right, so so there are ways, and it's not that complicated. Now, obviously, if, when, when if we want to make music here, uh, we don't want to think in terms of voltage either way, right? So it's like we we need another way of of communicating simple stuff, and it's very very simple in teletype. You just type n, and then this is your note number. So you're telling teletype that you want to have that you want to have a note number two in semi semitones, right? So it's like a, let me actually finish it. Here we go. So you are saying right now that you want to send note 12 in semitones to CV1. That's how simple it is. Now we could uh, expand it further and say, I want the, the note to be random and the range is 12 semitones. So this is how you can use this first um, mode in Teletype. It's called the live mode and you can see there's a triangle here, but there are two other modes it operates and there are later you'll see how they all connect to each other. When you press tab, you can switch between them. So this is live mode, this is script mode, and this is tracker. And you can also see it here, live mode, edit, uh, and tracker, and actually they call it edit mode, but this is where you, you put scripts. Uh, and this is like a, the main brain of, of this module. Um, the, the way I would describe it is that, you know, this is your playground live mode or something that you can quickly communicate. It's just one command at a time. So you can test stuff, you can quickly change the, the how teletype works. This is your brain where you actually program your scripts. And this is your data center where you can have nodes, you have tracks, sequences, and all that. So let's graduate right now from this playground into the script. And 
all you need to do is we can just type the same command here just cv1 right so we want this one i want note of random value between 0 and 12. so now we have a script in and obviously we could write you know other lines here um but the, so the way you trigger it is by sending trigger input to one of these inputs so they all correspond to uh, individual scripts right now we are on script one which means that this script will only be triggered when something goes in here so let's try that So uh, as you can imagine, uh, we can now f uh, use uh, an LFO. Now, it's uh, atonal right now, 12, 12 tone, uh, con constantly random 12 tones. So, Let's quantize it, and there's a very easy way to quantize these sequences uh, in Teletype. Just go into this n function, and you just add dot b. So now we are in major key. Uh, if you want to change the scale, you type in n b. And zero, it, it, I always put zero here, it, it indicates the root note. So just for now, just always put zero. And then you can either type some negative numbers. So this is minor scale. This is like pentatonic. Um, and these scales are in uh, included in reference but I, I honestly, I, I don't like constantly looking into reference. So there's a better way is to simply say, um, express your scale in binary, uh, as a binary number. And so for, for those of you who are in, in computer science, this will be very easy. But if not, just forget about all, all binary and, and, and all that. You just, you just look what I'm doing right now. I'm just typing R and then I'm going to write my scale as a sequence of zeros and ones. So let's say we want to have a blue scale. I want C, I don't want C sharp, I don't want D, I want E flat, I don't want E natural. I want F, I definitely want F sharp, this is our blue note. I want G, no A flat, no A, I want B flat and no B. So now we have a blue scale here, right? And by the way, we could move this command for clarity up. So the way you do it is by holding option and uh, moving these commands with arrows. So let's review it. We have this function b that um, nb that when it's with two parameters, it sets the quantizer, as you might say. Uh, and later I'm using the same function, but with just one parameter, right? This one, random 12, is just one number. Um, and then it knows it has to give me the, the right note. Uh, so let's change it to, let's say, pentatonic. And that, uh, that quantizer, it will be working globally for an entire module. So you can, you can use it as like a central place where you change scales and so forth. Um, let's add another track. So let's say CV2, I'm going to copy the same thing. So CV2 and B random 12. And that will go now from here. Right, so you can, we, we now are expanding our script, you can do whatever you want here. There is, a, however, a, a, a chance that you might, for example, decide that maybe the second track should go into script two. And if you do that, then you will have to clock that two independently. And that means, obviously, that you, know, you could do something like this. 
right? They are completely independent scripts. Um, there's also another possibility, which is Teletype has its own metronome. Right now it's off, but you can um, activate it. So how you, how you use it? In script mode, in edit mode, right now we are on script number two. You can, you can move between these scripts by brackets, left bracket and, and right bracket. And if you go over them, you'll see there are eight of them corresponding to each inputs. Then you have metronome and I. So I is in it. Uh, initializing script so it, it triggers when you open teletype and m is the one that obviously we are interested in it's a metronome this script runs at internal rate of uh at, at initially it will be like one second i think so do and from 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 this position you can simply do something like this script one so now this metronome is activated and if you type in here, you will see the current uh, time in milliseconds. So it's one second, right? So let's add script two. And now we can change the speed. We can also deactivate this metronome with M act zero or one. So let's review what happens here. Every 180 milliseconds, right, we can see it, 180 milliseconds, this M script triggers, and whatever you write here will be, will be, will be triggered, will, will, will do something. So in this case, we are just activating script one and two. It's like connecting two triggers into these inputs. Then script one is setting up our quantizer in first line and then sending random value that is quantized to cv1 and then cv2 is doing the same except going into cv2 so see if you can do it on your own and, and experiment just to get the hang of it i think it's a good exercise um, if you're starting and everything should really um, kind of be, <laughs> be easier when, when you do that. And once you have good grasp of th these basics, you can do fun stuff. For example, we could, we could say that script one will be triggered every three metronome ticks. So if you're on, on headphones, it's, it should be left channel. Uh, we could say um, probability of, let's say, 50% that script 2 will trigger. Or we can say skip every, every 5. Uh, there are also Euclidean rhythms. This might be a little bit complicated because we would have to talk about conditional statements and stuff like that and how Euclidean's work here, but you can just copy for now. Um, ER, so Euclidean rhythm 7 by, let's say, 11, and you type O. It's not 0. Remember, it's not 0, it's O. So, you know, a lot of fun. You can uh, treat this metronome script as your kind of a brain or, or, or command center for other scripts. You can have, let's say, eight scripts here and just trigger them from one central space. There's one problem, though, if you want to have that kind of command center structure here where you have everything in one and you can just control it. To give you an example, you know, let's say we want to change the range of that randomness. We would have to go into both scripts and change it manually. So it's it's a problem, right? Especially if you have more scripts, you would like to be able to control it from one place. And the good news is you can. You can just replace this number with variable X. 
And once you have that, you can set this X to whatever you want. So this is how you do it. In Teletype, we don't do X equals 24. It's just like this. So now you might, especially if you're programming, coming from programming background, uh, so, okay, we didn't de declare this variable. We're, we're, what is going on? What is this variable, really? And Teletype simplifies this e e enormously. So when you're in live mode, you can press tilde key to toggle between this, this view. That, and this view shows you all variables you can use in Teletype. They are global variables, A, B, C, D, and then X, Y, Z, and T. It's up to you how you use them. Uh, so right now we are just using uh, the X. Um, I mean, if you go deeper into this module, you will realize that there are a few other variables like JK, they're local, there's I, very special variable for loops. There's also O, that it's a like a built-in uh, counter, there, there, is, there is a Q. So you can even use randomness as a variable. Um, but you know these are these are all that you're you'll be normally using so let's say a zero b zero you can you can also as, as as you know if you're beginning just practice a little bit just to see if you understand what's going on here um oh, sorry it's d d zero um and these names don't really matter it's like you can use any of these uh variables. For example, T, the, the makers of this module, they were thinking, oh, it might be useful so for some kind of time-related uh, things. But, you know, I'm thinking T as a transposition, right? I would like to be able to uh, set the transposition of these uh, two scripts. So let, let me give you an example. CV offset is what is doing transposition in this module. So I could say CV offset and note of that offset or this transposition should be set to variable t. So I'm going to copy that uh, copy that into script 2 as well. So it's now the second one. And if I have that, then I can just simply say transpose by 12. Right, so this is an example of how, how you can decide what your variables are doing and obviously don't worry if you ever run out of variables you still have entire tracker uh, view here that has like you know 64 uh, on each track so you have plenty of spaces to save your numbers and this module is really about small scripts so it, you're not going to build some big you know uh, large language modules uh, models with this um, okay so we talk about variables and now it's great because we could go into a metronome script and control everything from here. So let's say my X will be, right? So it's fun, but the, now we would like to also be able to, let's say we want to control it in real time. And I'm thinking, okay, wouldn't it be nice if I could have another module in VC Virac with, let's say, some kind of constant voltage here to plug in into this X, right? It would be nice. And we can do that. Uh, there is input here, it's called in, and all you need to do is connect it and then assign in, and that's it. There's only one caveat. I, I will be moving this voltage very slowly. The problem is range. So if you go into live mode and see Look what happens to this X if I just move this fader tiny a little bit. See? So the problem is that the, the range of this input is now from 0 to 16 over 16,000. And we may need to change it. So obviously you could change it with math, but uh, there's a really awesome function here called uh, scale. So you just type in scale, and then you say, I want this to be range of 0 to, let's say, 20. And now, isn't it nice? And obviously now we're tempted by this possibility because we could have some kind of external 
structure that controls our generative patch within Teletype. You can do uh, something similar with parameter. Um, you can also assign it to variable. So let's say we have, we want to assign y to param. And you'll see that it, it has also this huge range here. But let's say we, you want to control uh, some kind of probability with, with this parameter. Again, you would have to say param scale and then you say from 0 to 100 and if you do that then then this y behaves like that so let me actually uh, give you an example let's add another track to this script so let's let's say script 3 will be our little um, drum triggering script And here we're gonna do simple sample and hold. So this is another little little way to, yeah, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do sample and hold. I mean, it's almost the same thing. You just say CV, and then you can say um, voltage random, uh, and from zero to 10. All right, you have now sample and hold here. So let's do another one, CV4, also with the range of 10. I'm gonna do some uh, something fun with uh, filter pinging. So I'm gonna get a filter here, and I'm going to connect one of these values to the cutoff uh, frequency and another one to actual input to get some nice clicks and pings. just before self-oscillation. And I'm going to use another one. I'm just going to connect them the other way. So now I have this script that triggers regularly, but I would like to now control the each of these separate um, elements with probability. So for example, I could write before this one, you could say par, uh, probability 50%, probability 50%. And now I'm thinking, okay, I would like to control it with this parameter and we scale it to 0 to 100. So all I need to do now is simply say y, because remember we assigned this parameter to variable y. And notice how, how, how um, convenient everything is now. It's like we're controlling the, the, this generative script from a fader or CV. So I can really fine tune the way this module is supposed to work. All right, guys, full reset. I'm starting over. This is initialized version of Teletai because now I want to talk about the third mode of this module. So we talked about 
live mode, which is this your, your playground where you can try ideas. We talked about scripts or edit mode where you can program your scripts. There are eight scripts plus metronome and init script. And then finally, the third mode is a tracker mode. So what is tracker mode? Um, essentially, what you see here is a bunch of numbers you can save. These are not much different than your variables here. Here you have eight variables, but if that's not enough, you have like tons of them here. You have 64 variables per each channel. Uh, you can think of them as arrays if you're coming from, from computer science um, background. It's like a matrix or, or two-dimensional error. You can you can just just access these numbers and reference them uh, in this kind of coordinate system. So, for example, this one is zero on track zero. So, so this will be coordinate zero zero. Uh, this one would be, for example, coordinate um, one three. Right? These tracks are um, counted from zero one two three, and then these numbers you can see them on on the left side. So, to give you an example, let's say we have some kind of crazy number here. You basically you can type any number here and just press enter to accept. If we now go to live mode, and if I type pattern number, oh, by the way, what was the yeah was this pattern is is resides uh, the address of this this little number is two by three. Right? You can see coordinates. So in x is two and y would be three. So two by three, so you can say pattern number two, index three, and if you press enter, it's like asking what is the number there? And as you can see, you have the answer. So now you can just add extra value here and write another crazy number, maybe not that crazy, um, and you can press enter, and if we go to live mode, sorry, to, to tracker mode, you see it's this is updated. Uh, and to give you a few more examples, just random stuff, um, metronome script, we can say pattern number, whatever, zero and five. I want this number to be random. I'm going to copy that. And then I say pattern one and some other value here, or pattern, let's say on the right would be the, the, the three by, let's say, I don't know, two. If we now go to this tracker view, you see that these numbers are being now triggered from my metronome script. And everything works just before. So let's say we say metronome should run every 100 milliseconds. And boom, we have like a random generation inside this matrix. And you can use it uh, however you like. Now. So this is obviously useful if you want to, you know, create some kind of sequences programmatically and read them through or in random access, however you like. But there are some easier ways uh, to use this tracker as a kind of sequential or as a sequencer even. So let me actually delete that script for now. Um, and let's reset everything. I'm going to show you what, what kind of uh, scripts you need to write is just before we get there, there's one quirky thing that threw me off at the, at the beginning, and it's like, you, you really need to now pay attention. So these sequences, there, there are a couple of things that you need to um, learn, which is one is the length. Right now, all of them have length zero. You can still access all the numbers individually, but if you want to use it in a tracker mode, this kind of sequential read, uh, you need to set different lengths. So what I did right now, I pressed Shift L. So with Shift L, you can set different lengths of this pattern and try it on your own to see, you should see that these, these numbers are slightly highlighted right now. And so let's do it on every track. So now the pattern is, uh, all tracks will, the pattern length is eight, right? So if you, if you scroll down, you see that it kind of ends here. And another thing to try is Shift E and Shift S. So it's start and end. You can use that extra um, 
extra playhead uh, scope here to loop them. So you'll see in action when we start doing it, but I, I want you to remember that there are basically three keyboard shortcuts that you will be using. One is Shift L to, to set the length. Another one is Shift E, which is end, and another one is Shift S. So once again, length for L for length, S for start, E for end. It's very easy to remember. So once you once you kind of open the sequence with with proper lengths, like eight uh, eight steps, you can write your first script that will drive that tracker. So it's very simple. What you need to do is say PN. But this time we are not setting individual indexes to some random number. Instead, what we're going to do is pn next. And then you say which track you want to advance. So let's say track zero. And right, you see now this little playhead is going sequentially. Uh, and let's say metronome will be now slightly slower. Now, if we go to metronome again and say PN next one, see another track is moving here. So let's say we have, we want to uh, have a sequence and uh, we want the, the sequence to be in semitones because it's up to you how this tracker works, right? You can design your own tracker here. Um, and so I have I have a sequence here on track one. And nothing yet happens, right? So let's get ready. So nothing, nothing yet works because we still have to write in our script. Let's delete the second one. We need to, so now it's just, uh, you know, reading, but it doesn't send anywhere, right? It doesn't send those values anywhere. So I say CV1 note, and that's it. And now you can really play with the length. Um, and if you try to experiment with start and end, you can try it here now. So th there's a subtle difference. like. I, I, I don't want to explain too much because in certain circumstances, these two act differently. There are also functions that require uh, certain, like they only work within the scope of start and end. So um, for now, I think we can just keep everything on kind of default. Right, and if you now want to send the second track, can say CV2 and PN next, but track one. Maybe. And just like in, in previous modes, you can still have a lot of fun. For example, you can say there's a, some kind of probability here that this second track will advance. We can say skip every seventh. And there's also nothing to stop you from treating these numbers as uh, quantized. So this is great because you can now say, let's say, um, I want random track from zero to three on random index from zero to seven to have a random number, let's say 12. 
now notice that entire entire system starts populating with different melodies. Can let's say more. It's fun. still edit it or do something fun with it or start and stuff and by the way we, we should probably also uh, we also need to send the CV to individual locations So it's sequencing madness uh, and by the way it, it just you know it's there are so many possibilities you can like there is like a map function that it, they can transpose or change you know apply some kind of math to each of these uh, individually you, you also have if you press shift 2 you have a turtle that you can uh, you can you can actually let me show you turtle step uh, but for this we would have to set the fence of this first. So let's say set fence 0037 and then we also have to do something like uh, wrap, but don't worry about it yet. I'm just going to show you what, what's going on. So when I do step now, I have like a another play hat that right now is going and the, the, that's a funny thing I mean crazy thing about it is that you can you can uh, you can specify direction of it so right now it's 180 but if you say zero sorry uh, direction zero now it's going the other way so now obviously what we could do is add by the way with the semicolon you can put two commands on one uh, line so we can say direction is now random in 360 so now this 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 turtle is going all around and if you go, go down this rabbit hole you can now use this to either play extra sequence here or even like you know d change numbers as it goes like it, there's a lot of lot of fun here in this module um, if you go deeper into uh, manual, but the principle is the same. It's like you know, this is your your uh, matrix of numbers that you can use in some interesting ways. So anyway, uh, experiment with that and uh, and see if if this tutorial help you in any way. Get started. Um, all right, guys. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I guess this this is it for now. Uh, Oh, and by the way, you know what? If you if you are with me still, I'm going to show you a little neat trick. Let's say you have this module in an initialized state, and uh, you just want to use it as a tracker. So let's set all these to their respective lengths. You can just type in metronome script this command l zero sorry one to four cvi then n uh sorry uh, then pn next and then it's kind of something of crazy minus i one and by the way here we have to also set N in order for this to work. And notice that now with just one command I'm moving everything at the same time. And each of these tracks now will correspond to individual track.
obviously we can now play around with different lengths, polymetric stuff and all that. So once again, if you want to copy that command, if you want to go deeper, it's I'm simply using a loop. So this command after colon will be repeated four times and every time it repeats, this I will have a value from one to four. So on the first run, this I will be one. On the second run will be two and so forth. Then we are saying note and read this PN from the next uh, from next pattern, give me, give me the number. And because um, tracks are, <clears throat> the, the counting starts from zero and not from one, just like in CV case, uh, we have to uh, subtract one from I. So normally this would be sub, but the short version is, is minus. So this is like a little trick to make it as concise as possible. Obviously now we can add B. Pretty. All right, guys, I think this is a good place to stop. All right, thanks. See you next time.